In the deep recesses of one's mind, there is a voice, a guiding light through the darkness, a connection to the other side. You're ready to wake up, you're going to wake up. And if you're not ready, you're going to stay pretending that you're just a little, poor little me. Pathway to spiritual that echoes with enlightenment. The voice of spirit. The voice of spirit. You are a function of this total galaxy, bounded by the Milky Way, and that furthermore, this galaxy is a function of all other galaxies. Your journey starts here and now. With your host and connection to spirit, Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Hi, welcome to Core Radio. You're listening to the Voice of Spirit, Leo Bonomo, and I'm very, very pleased uh, this evening to have uh, Billy Cook, a, a, a good friend of mine. He's a wonderful international medium. And so we're going to be talking uh, to Billy about uh, some of his experiences, how we got into spiritualism and first seeing spirit. And uh, some of the shows that he's doing, because he's, I'm sure you've all heard of Golden Smith. Um, he's working with Golden Smith later in the year. Um, he, he also teaches uh, mediumship. So we're going to be talking about some of the things that Billy's uh, going to be doing throughout the year. So a very, very warm welcome. Hi, Billy. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Leah, nice to talk to you again. It's lovely to talk to you again. It's always, always a pleasure and always very entertaining. Um, I'm sure uh, some of you have seen Billy work, um, but if you haven't, um, it, it's always fun, isn't it, Billy? Uh, it's the joy of spirit. Um, sometimes I think we take all a bit too seriously. But just because our loved ones have passed over to the spirit world, it doesn't mean to say that they've lost their sense of humour. They come back with that joy, letting us know that life continues in a final way. A absolutely absolutely and um i know sometimes when i'm doing readings because uh like um i would say most mediums uh, um don't remember the uh, the readings themselves and i'm just aware of laughing so much after i put the phone down so it's uh they don't lose their sense of humor and that's great okay yeah. um tell us a little bit about uh, your first memory of seeing spirit um that, that was your mum wasn't it well Actually, it wasn't. It was uh, my. That was the one that we put in the um, in the profile. But um, when I first started doing this work, my elder sister May said, "No, no, you saw Granny Cook." I said, "Did I?" And apparently, in the old days, you know, when yeah. someone was dying, everyone used to gather around the bed, yes. and uh, everyone was gathered around Granny Cook's bed, and uh, they all felt hungry because. She'd taken a couple of days to, to pass over. And my cousin, Terry, went over to the fish and chip shop to buy fish and chips for 14 people. Oh. On the way there, <laughs> she died. So, of course, when she come back, nobody fancied them except my Aunt Aggie, who ate most of it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she died of being obese later in life. And, oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... Um, I was coming home from school and uh, I saw my gran and she said, tell your mum that Aunt Aggie ate all the fish and chips. I said, oh, you're better now. She said, yeah. So I skipped home. I was only five or six. And I goes into the house and they're all crying. And uh, I said, what's the matter? They said, oh, Granny Cook's died. I said, no, I just seen her. Yeah. And my mum, who, who was very spiritually aware, um, she used to read the cards and the tea leaves. She said, what did she say? I said, she said, Aunt Aggie ate all the fish and chips. Of course, everyone started laughing. Mm. And, of course, that was the first evidence that I gave of spirit, which, unbeknown to me, um, they all loved and enjoyed. Yeah. But it was later, yeah. Yeah. But it was later on in life when I saw my mum. That was when I was 14, after she died. Oh, oh. And I was being a little so-and-so, and no one was going to take the, the place of of my mum, I was only 14, and everyone had gone to see the Palladium to see Jerry Lewis, and I wouldn't go, and I would go. Um, I wasn't all horrible, because I made a pot of tea for them um, just before they come home. I knew what time they was coming, and I made the pot of tea in those old brown teapots with a tea cosy on it, and yeah. uh, 
the next thing my mum's sitting there just as I remembered her wearing a, a pinny four and her hair in the back and I said oh mum do you want a cup of tea and then I said oh my god you're bloody dead and uh, <laughs> I ran out of the house and my elder sister May who I spoke about just now she was yeah. coming along the street with my dad and brothers and sisters and I was crying uh, and May said what on earth's the matter I said, Mum, Mum's in there. I've just said, Mum. She said, Well, she wouldn't hurt you. She's come because she loves you. She said, That's what it's about. So, since then, or when I started to work for Spirit, that's what I've always based my mediumship on. The ties of love can never be broken. Yeah, uh, that that's that's absolutely right. And um, it's that joy, as you said in in the beginning, that that brings. Um, people closer to their loved ones, but gives them great inspiration for life, doesn't it? Exactly, yeah. It's great. And just to know that they are safe. Everyone, yeah. especially if you've lost a child, and, you know, we all miss that touch, that feel, that embrace. But I believe in the embrace of spirit, and we can allow them to come as close as possible, and uh, you can feel them around you. We miss it so much. And once you give them that evidence, um, it's absolutely marvellous. And some of the stuff that we can give, or I should say what the loved ones give to us as the telephone exchange. I always remember when I first started off and this man come to me with his two children and his mother-in-law, his wife had passed over. Mm -hmm. And uh, she gave a wonderful um, evidence to him. Um, he was all upset naturally. And, yeah. and then she mentioned his nickname that she called him. Well, he started crying. I started crying. <laughs> the kids come running in. They was crying. <laughs> it, but it was just a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And that's the joy of what we do. Uh, it is. I'm. I'm kind of glad that you sort of mentioned that. Um. Uh, that you were crying as well, because sometimes you know um, that happens to me when I demonstrate, and it, it can mm. be quite emotional. And oh, I know. Really? Yeah, and I know some some hold back on that, don't they? Stiff up a lip and that, um, mm. which I can understand. But I, I think if, if that emotion comes through, you, you get such a strong connection. Uh, oh, with man. that person, yeah, yeah. And that other people can feel it as well, can't they? They can feel that energy. Oh, once you've got that wonderful connection to spirit, the people there can, can feel it as well. And that's yeah. when we get those magical nights. And, of course, what we do is we learn to control the emotions, but we still allow them to come through. Um, yeah. There's no good as breaking down and crying and sobbing all over the platform, <laughs> the stage to everyone. No. Um, we're supposed to be bringing comfort to those people. <laughs> um, but of course, I think it's wonderful to use your emotion to feel the essence of that soul that's coming through. And too often now we see people that are training to do mediumship, I feel, becoming too mechanical. Um, I, I, yeah, I absolutely agree. Yeah, mm. it's because uh, th there's there's an essence there that's lost when it's like that, isn't it? Ex exactly. Yeah, it's got to be. I very much teach my students to allow the person to come through with their personality and who they are. And when you feel that and you give that, then it's so emotional. It's so wonderful. And they say, you know, some of the words you use and many mm. times people have said to me oh that's what my dad or my mum would have said that way you know it's lovely yeah because sometimes the skeptics throw at us don't they that um well that's a bit general and this is a bit general but um, oh leo 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 <laughs> you're not still worrying about skeptics are you Let oh, them me no i never do no, i never do um, i take no notice i i don't and and i never try and change them or anything no but, um, what's the point it, yeah, but it's it's like you say, you know, your vocabulary will change. You'll use exactly. patterns of words, yeah, and often, exactly. yeah. yeah, often that conveys um, more um, the personality confirmation. Of them, yeah. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. I, I was doing a demonstration um, once. I can't remember where now. Just um, a, a small church, and. Um, some mediums they they kind of float in don't they mediums room 
Um, yeah. Get on the platform. They do their bit. They float back to the medium's room and they're gone. And I, I've never done that. Um, oh, no. Uh, I think you're the same. I go and mix. And I was I having a very chat. So. Yeah. I, I Because, th- you know, the, uh, one of the first times I did that, um, I was chatting to this lady and she went, oh, you're quite normal, really, aren't you? Because <laughs> you know, she'd had these mysterious mediums that float on and float away, mm-hmm. and, you know, and some airy fairy, as we as we know. And um, but uh, yeah, so um, yeah, so I was doing this demonstration. I went down to get a cup of coffee, and uh, this lady said to me, uh, "I didn't know you had a limp." And I said, "I have." And uh, as I was walking around the platform, you know, it was her husband that came through, apparently, that had a limb. Right. So. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. It's so, funny what people sorry. think about us. Gordon Smith and I were doing a demonstration at the SAGB once, and we were talking to some people having a, a drink afterwards, and uh, he said, oh, excuse me, I must go to the toilet. She said, oh, do you use the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> And we we just we just looked at each other. Yeah, <laughs> it was so so funny. They, they they do have very very strange ideas um, uh, about us us as people, but um, also about what we do. You know, that, uh, uh, yeah, that is uh, why uh, education is so important. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm a great believer in letting everybody know, um, well, we're all psychic to a degree. Um, Mm. Some it's more enhanced and uh, sometimes uh, there's real mediumship there. Mm. Um, But we're just simple people, aren't we? No, or we shouldn't have airs and graces, but no airs and graces. Um, We're just lucky enough to, to do what we do. You know me very well. You've seen me work a few times. And you know, I don't have any airs and graces. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. But um, yeah. I, I was doing, um, no, I wasn't doing it. I, I, I was sitting in, I, I had a night off. And as, as you do, um, I, I went to a church, uh, you know, just to make it different. And uh, I was sitting at the back. And uh, this, uh, I decided to get up just before whoever was demonstrating. And I walked outside, and there was a lady floating around outside. And I said, oh, "Are you going in?" She went, "Oh no, 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 won't go in, won't go in." And I said, "Oh no, no it's fine." So I kind of gradually coaxed her to the door, and she stuck her head in, and she went, "Oh, it's quite light, isn't it?" <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? Yeah. She said, I thought it was in the dark and there was broomsticks hanging from the ceiling and all this oh, stuff was going to happen. If only, if only. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah. I did admit that bit when I was talking to her. But uh-huh. yeah, you know, she just had a very strange idea of it being a bit sort of um, witch like and, and covenous. And it's oh, like, yeah. no, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, very, very, very strange. Um, <laughs> At our church in Paynton, the Paynton Spiritual Church down here in Devon, um, when we do the service, the chairperson always takes us to the door and we shake hands and speak to everyone as they leave or, or go into the room for a cup of tea and a sandwich or something. So it's nice to mix with people as they uh, sort of come in and go out. It's a po- important, the big welcome. And many people say one of the reasons our churches are sort of losing their congregations these days it because of that lack of a con of the warp in a, for the congregation i feel it's important that we make people part of the demonstration part mm. of the evening and too often they sort of become a sort of a, just an accessory they are the demonstration um uh, absolutely absolutely and it's important as well you you know that the the right energy is generated isn't it because yeah yeah i I once did um croydon church i was blessed to be asked i know i think there are three or three churches in croydon but Mm -hmm. i think it was the main one and it was quite hard to get into and they extended an invitation to me which was um quite nice and uh, they said, I oh, would like you back, which is, is an honour again. And they phoned me up about a week later and they said, "We've um, do, do you do short notice? So I said, yeah. So they said, well, come along. This was a Wednesday night. And uh, I got in there and um, it, it was pretty packed. And 
there were lots of skeptics in the audience. Oh, yes. Mm. Yeah, so I went to one guy and I gave him some things and he wouldn't accept them. So I thought, okay, that's fine. Went to the next one that happened again. Then the next one happened again. And for me, it actually, strangely enough, really boosted my confidence because I thought, well, you know, I'm here to do a job. I'm going to enjoy myself. And I did. And, um, but it was, it was a very strange experience. It was obviously meant to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think if you have an experience like that and you can mm -hmm. use it to your advantage, then it oh, is very much thing. so. Yeah. Um, I, I was doing a demonstration at the Lau of the Gardens, a lovely place in Blackpool many years ago. And we, um, did the radio program on, on um, Radio Lancashire and, uh, lots of interest. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when we got to the theatre that night, um, the born again Christians were marching up and down, <laughs> and uh, it, well, it filled the place up, um, and uh, and they come in as well and sat in all a big row together, and tried to be um, awkward, but I managed to go to one of these girls there and gave her a message. Well, she was in tears. It was wonderful. <laughs> um, not wonderful that she was crying, but wonderful that she finally changed her mind and could believe what we was doing. So. Um, as you know, we don't judge anyone's uh, religion. Yeah. We accept everyone, whoever they may be, and including race, colour, religion, sexuality. This spiritual movement we talk about embraces all mankind. Uh, absolutely. Um, I was privileged. Um, I started training at the SAGB, and I was with um, uh, Robert Brown um, for, oh, yeah, for a yeah. little while. And mm -hmm. uh, it was supposed to be a 10 week course. They run them in 10 week blocks. And mm -hmm. uh, he was there for about three or four weeks and then he disappeared. Nobody knew where he'd went. He'd ended up in Germany um, for, for a while. And um, I, I had the pleasure of seeing him demonstrate. And uh, across the, the aisle and slightly back, there was a gentleman there. And um, I, I realized immediately that he was skeptic and uh, uh, Robert Brown went to him and uh, said to him, uh, you're skeptic, aren't you? And uh, he said, yeah. So then you've got all the body language, you know, cross legs, crossed arms. He leaned back in the chair and uh, Robert Brown said to him, you, you'll need something um, pretty special then. Um, so, um, and we can't do this now because we've got data protection, of course, but he said, um, I'll tell you what, I'll give you your bank account number. And he did. <laughs> it was the funniest thing I ever seen. This guy went mm. white. It was brilliant. Yeah. So it's, uh, sometimes it's good to get, um, a, a test like that because it makes them oh, think. Oh yeah. It? Yeah. It's, it's nice to be tested. And that's what I tell my students and, and aspiring mediums. Always push back the boundaries. Don't be happy with just what you've got. Always be tested and test yourself. Remember the spirit world road testers. They let us go on. We have to do it ourselves. They don't judge us. They don't test us. We do it ourselves. And don't judge ourselves too harshly either. Go out there, become the best that you can, but always strive to go one step better. Yeah, absolutely. I, I tell my students something, um, something similar, you know, um, whatever you've got, um, do push those boundaries, ask for other things because spirit will sit back. And, and if we're very exactly. complacent, it'll just stay at that level. Stay at that level. Yeah. 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 And you often see it with people that go around the centers and churches that they do the same six messages every week. Um, and nothing grows from it as well. I strongly very much believe in the, um, the, the church circuit where mm. people um, go out and learn their trade so that they gain the knowledge of our movement from the pioneers up to today. And uh, then we can answer questions when people ask those questions about what we do in our movement and what it is about. Yeah, again, I think that's something that's that's uh, quite um, important. Um, I, I, I was quite privileged to go see uh, John Edward, and mm -hmm. um, in a in a big theatre in, in in London, and uh, I liked the way that he worked. Uh, and uh, he, he was he's very casual, of course. They, they don't dress like you know in the states as we dress. So it was a jumper and jeans, the usual sort of thing that he wore. Oh, how um, common! 
<laughs> I know what you mean, yeah. And uh, very laid back and just answering questions for about, you know, 20 minutes, things things that were thrown at, at him and uh, about spirit. You know, I, I suppose like you and I, the usual kind of questions. Um, and I thought that was very nice. And it, it's a very kind of laid back way of working. It doesn't suit everyone, no. you know. Um, but it, it, it's very, uh, well, like yours, really, very open and welcoming and uh, and quite funny. But uh, it was nice to see him work because we all work differently, don't exactly. we? Exactly. Every medium um, works differently. Um, it's na the, the natural thing um, because we are different. Our energies are different. We work with different helpers, guides from the spirit world. Mm -hmm. So it is um, it's natural that um, we all work in a different way. And I always say to people, that, especially when they go to these uh, spiritual houses of learning, don't yeah. be a clone of anyone else. Be yourself. Yeah, be yourself. I, I, I've seen that with some um, better known mediums and their students. And oh, yeah, yeah. I can tell who they are. Mini, yeah, yeah, exactly. Little mini me's. And, and to uh. me, that's such a shame because they've obviously got a talent you know, uh -huh. um, but yeah, it's got, um, that they, we do need to be ourselves. Uh, as you say, we're very much individuals. Talking about wearing a jumper and jeans mm -hmm. at the, at the Eastbourne, um, workshop seminar, we used to do twice a year with, with Gordon Smith at the SHGB mm -hmm. and, uh, this rather cocky young man who thought he knew everything. Um, he said to me, what advice can you give me? I said, well, I'd always have my, my hair done by Vilas as soon and always wear Armani. <laughs> 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 he could have killed me. <laughs> I can quite imagine him actually taking that on and thinking, that's exactly. a good idea. Billy's exactly. told me that. Yeah. yeah. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. You have to <laughs> smile at the, the attitudes of some people because you've got to be open not in giving things or giving of yourself be open to new experiences open to new things which is so so important yeah because once you start limiting yourself you know it's, yes. it's a downward slope isn't it yeah, yeah but very yes. much so. very much um we've um we've just got a minute now so we're just going to um, go into a break shortly and um, after that we'll talk about some some of the uh, summer school um, mediumship courses that you do right and, yeah. uh, and if anyone wants to to call in uh, it's 702-425-9230 and uh, uh, we'll, um, we'll we'll take any any calls um, that you you want to make any questions and um, if there's any readings uh, perhaps uh, so we're open to anything that you want to ask so if you want to do that in the chat or, or call us directly um, here we are so we're just going to go into a break now and we'll be right back after this this is the voice of spirit your connection to the other side to understand something spiritually you must experience it and in order to experience it you have to experience it in your imagination explore with us by calling 702-425-9230 that's 702-425-9230 uh, give us a call now worldwide colors use skype name kcor radio Everything that now exists was once imagined. Therefore, everything that is going to exist must first be imagined. Back with your guide to spirit, Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. After these brief words from our sponsors. We interrupt to bring you this. Would you like to advertise on KCOR Digital Radio Network? <laughs> This is what I'm talking about! At a fraction of the cost of traditional radio advertising, why not? 
Tell them the good news. Whether you need to promote your next book, product, or service, we can customize a package for just about any budget. Finally, there is hope for the hopeless. Why limit yourself to a tiny local market when KCOR can brand you to the world? Here's all you do. Visit KCORradio.com or contact our sales department by email at saleskcorradio.com. We want it now! See the difference with us by letting us work for you. This ain't reality TV! The KCOR Digital Radio Network. Dear John, uncontrolled high blood pressure is serious, and I can quit whenever I want. But when I quit, you quit. Sincerely, your heart. To get your high blood pressure to a healthy range, visit heart.org slash blood pressure. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. Thursday nights are about to get weird on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Join hosts Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz as they go exploring the bizarre. Jet across the cosmos with two of the most electrifying paranormal researchers in the known universe. Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Exploring. The Bizarre Bizarre. takes you deep within the world of the unexplained. UFOs, 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 ghosts, ghosts, lost worlds, worlds, cryptozoology. cryptozoology. It's time to take back the night night. with hosts Timothy Beckley and Tim Swartz. Exploring the Bizarre. Bizarre. Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Only on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. This is the world-famous KCOR. That's the only station I listen to. Incoming message. In a digital world infiltrated by government as well as civilian disinformation, a single, powerful, and researched voice speaks through the night. We're getting a signal. Join Erica Lukes, the host of UFO Classified, as she interviews some of the hottest, sometimes controversial, but always informative people in the world of ufology and the paranormal. They knew for sure that it was an alien craft and our governments around the world have covered it up. The reason I was taken aboard was because it, there was no choice. I would have, uh, I would have been dead. UFO Classified, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, every Friday night. Exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. The truth is out there just waiting to be discovered. But the question is, are you ready for it? UFO Classified, hosted by Erica Lukes, the new voice of the high desert. Exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. to the voice of spirit your connection to the other side there's no accidents in this universe we all show up here with a purpose there's an intelligence that is a part of everything and everyone and all of us are connected to it connect with us on twitter by using hashtag kcor even better join us live in our chat room at kcorradio.com to get a free reading during the show call 702 425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Give us a call now. Worldwide callers, use Skype name KCOR Radio. And now, inspirational clairvoyant medium, psychic, and your connection to the spirit, the host of the voice of spirit, Leo Bonomo. Hi, and welcome back. To, uh, uh, to the show, we're talking to uh, a good friend of mine, Billy Cook, a, a wonderful international me- medium, and uh, we're, we're talking about uh, things uh, of mediumship uh, in general, and also uh, we've covered how Billy started, and we're going to go through some of the um, uh, workshops that Billy's going to do, because uh, um, you, you're, you're very busy on the workshop um, front, aren't you, Billy? Oh, I, I enjoy doing it very much. Yeah. Um, the um, actually, um, we've got a few things coming up soon. Um, have you, you've heard of Keith Charles, of course, haven't you? 
Yes, yes, yes. Well, we did a thing called Spirit Quest on the 2nd, 3rd and 4th of February. About 500 people turned up, all spiritual people, um, different mediums. There's um, Stephen Holbrook doing a demonstration, me, oh, yeah. Les Henderson, um, Sandy Ingham, the uh, artist, Donald Stewart, and loads, loads more. Um, and there's workshops and seminars. I'm doing a dem, some of the others are as well, and uh, some workshops. And it's always great because they're like-minded people that only want to add to their knowledge. But also, I always learn from them. But that's a, a great, great weekend if you ever get the chance to go. They go. It's on every year. And uh, you can always yeah. get it from this Spirit Quest um, webpage. Uh, but, Spirit Quest. I'll make a note of that because, yeah, I would like to go. I, I would definitely like to go. It's great down there. It's just great. And what I like about it is not all about money. It's the cheapest one there is. And uh, the mediums go down there for not expensive things. You know, it's just for their, really for their um, expenses. They don't demand great wages. And uh, everyone works together. It's lovely. Um, but the night before, me and Craig Morris, a lovely, wonderful, up-and-coming medium. Oh, as you know, I enjoy encouraging young mediums to come through. We're doing an evening mediumship at the... Um, community centre there in Alien Island. Oh, that's 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 great. It's interesting because um, uh, I feel the same. You know, you say there's always something to learn. Uh, I, I learn something. Yeah, I learn something every day. Mostly, what I learn is I don't really know anything. You know, it's it's always a surprise, <laughs> and there's always so much more to learn, isn't always there? Always you know? something, something to learn. But we've got an exciting thing happening here in Torquay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you ever heard of Kent's Cavern. Um, yes, it goes yes. back to prehistoric times, the caves. Well, we're doing a demonstration there uh, with Marie Hines and Glenda Osborne, two lovely local mediums. Uh, it's the first time they've allowed anything to happen in there. And uh, it starts, I think it's 7.30 and goes on till gone 10. And because we've got a Buffy and bar afterwards as well. But um, And it'd be cold in there as well because it's right deep down. But <laughs> we went... We went there for a photo shoot and, uh, oh, it was so cold. So we got to wear something warm <laughs> that night <laughs> to put our thermals on. So it would be good. So after that, I'm off to Malmo in, in Sweden, 2nd, 3rd, 4th of March. And then um, I'm doing workshops, demonstrations, readings there. Um, and then off to Denmark again to a place called Koja, K-O-G-E. On the 6th, then the 9th of March, I'm doing a, another young, wonderful medium that's just been doing some television programs there in Denmark. I call Sebastian Laurentis in Copenhagen. It, a lovely little medium. Um, he came to one of my workshops a few years ago, and now he's working on his own. He's, he's very good. got a lovely light energy. He's really, really good and oh. nice to work with. And of course, we've got readings there and a workshop on the 10th of March in Copenhagen called Exploring the Techniques of Mediumship. I love that because you can show the students how to explore their own mediumship and how we will work differently with it, how to, to come into that energy in a different way, how it works for you, how it works for me, different ways about it, which is good. And of course, all those things there can be found on the my danish website www.billycook.dk and the english ones were my web on my web page anyway uh, the english web web page so that's great which yeah, leads mm. sorry billy go on which leads us up to um on july the first the seventh the summer school a half the welsh boys reckon beacons in wales with les anderson that it's called the Magic of Mediumship Summer School. I've been doing it now for, oh, God, I don't know how many years. It's mm -hmm. the same people come back. Every, it's absolutely fabulous. The Haven of the Trees is what um, Hafenir Koya means. It's the most beautiful, very basic, no frills. The food is adequate. There's nothing special there, but it helps you get back to your true spiritual self. And the teachings it's about working with oneself, working with your mediumship, your psychic abilities, your healing. Um, we have a lovely guy that comes to do trance with us. So we explore all kinds of things. But that is absolutely magic. 
So that's why we called it this year, the magic of mediumship. So, and uh, that's also on my, my webpage. And then, this is exciting. On the 3rd of September, we've got a Danish summer school with a lovely um, Danish medium called Annette Adele and Les Henderson as well. We're going to a place called Drawing Lund Slot. It's in North Jutland near Alberg. It is a castle. And, oh, that's uh, going to be great. <laughs> oh, I'm just, it's so beautiful. You can get it online. Um, it's <laughs> D-R-O-N-N-I-N-G-L-U-N-D. Slot obviously means castle. But we did it in another place um, last year, and it was so successful, they want us to do it again. But we found this other castle. Oh, it's atmospheric, beautiful. Um, Annette, Annette does ghost walks and everything, and uh, me and Les do mediumship with it too. It will be brilliant. And uh, we're looking forward. And all those details you can find on that, and that Adele DK uh, website. Oh, that's great. Because I was going to give you your um, British uh, website. So it's www.billycook, all one word, dot co, dot UK. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something else that they can, they can uh, find out. I've got an interesting, sorry, go on. And go the on. Danish, oh, I forgot about, oh, Gordon Smith for Bash Me. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, he said, "Mention Eastbourne." So we um, started. We, we stopped doing Eastbourne a few years ago um, when we um, left the SAGB, and uh, it's um, called the Eastbourne Experience. And uh, it's always the same, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Oh, it might be work. It might be work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, it's called the Eastbourne Experience. The 13th, 14th, 15th of April. Me and Gord Smith, Mary Armour, Craig, uh, but Janet Birdseye. I don't know if you remember her. And uh, uh, yeah, from a long time back. I know the name. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. And it's t and Stevie Levitt will do in healing. He's wrote some books in Germany. Um, it really is a fantastic weekend. Um, and we're, I'm looking forward to doing that because it's been a long time since we've done the Eastbourne experience. But all those details can be found on Gordon Smith's webpage. Oh, fantastic. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that's uh, www.gordonsmith, all one yeah. word, I assume, dot exactly. com. Fantastic. It's, it's right on the front page there. Yeah. Oh, that's so. brilliant because I know people will be very interested in that. I know yeah. in in Denmark and um, uh, all that part of the world, um, that their, their mediumship um, is quite different to the rest of the world, and in some senses, um, it, it's been. I wouldn't say ignored, but it, it, it's been hidden, hasn't it? Because um, there's a really good friend of mine, uh, Marion Dampergines. Yes, and, I know. Uh, she's Swedish. Yeah, lovely, lovely lady. And she was talking about um, mediums that um, uh, or healers that work in hospitals there. So it's not uncommon. And they're mm. called blood stoppers. Right. And uh, basically... Um, they're they're on call so if someone's being operated on and for example um a leak develops in the brain it, it would probably take too long to open the skull and everything so they use blood stoppers to stem the flow of blood um That's interesting. And i've never heard of that yeah, oh yeah. Um she she's she's on the show here um in a in a couple of weeks, I think. Right, um yeah. yeah, very, very interesting and um She's yeah, very interesting life, yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. Um, we've got a question here, so uh, we might be able to answer this together. But um, it's from Lulu, and she says, what advice do you have on choosing a medium to give you a reading? She lives in Kent, in England. Uh, would you suggest just a local one or go by price or be drawn to an individual or trust a recommendation? So um, what, what do you think, Billy? Cause, um, well, first of all, I would... <sighs> If she goes to demonstrations, I would go to see them work first mm. to see if they are sort of suitable for them. Mm. Um, a lot of people get disappointed when they go to see me. But I would also go by recommendation. Mm. But the trouble with that is what may be good for that person may not be good for you. 
So you have shipped. I wouldn't go by price. I know some mediums that charge ridiculous <laughs> prices of 100 odd pounds, and yep. uh, they, it doesn't give them a good message. All it does mm. is give our movement a bad name. Yep. So I wouldn't go with that. If she doesn't like going to the churches, um, but I would suggest that is the first place to start, um, to go there. But recommendation, um, going to see them first, um, you're drawn to someone. I know that I used to be drawn to a medium. They, they, It was like the essence of their being drew me to them and I wanted to have more of them. So, mm. yeah. But price, certainly not. And uh, I would say always be careful of people that tell me how wonderful they are. Yeah. Yes, yes, uh, th there's always there's always that. Um, On and, uh, saying that, some local mediums, just because they haven't had the publicity, are just as good as anyone else. Absolutely. I was just about to say that because I, I agree with what you've said um, um, entirely there. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I know of mediums that work in little back rooms and the standard is absolutely amazing, mm -hmm. um, you know. Um, but I, I would also, Lulu, uh, make sure that the, um, the medium that you go to or you choose, I think being drawn to is very important. Bill is absolutely right on price. You know, um, I've had some wonderful readings from people that they've almost been free or £10 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I would also look for mediums that don't ask questions um, mm -hmm. because you're there for information. Um, and they should be giving you information, not not um, trying to tease information out of you and mm -hmm. uh, Personally, that, that's the way that I work. I never ask questions. For me, an ideal sitting is um, spirit know why you've come. They know what's on your mind and they, they should answer every question you have without the need for you to ask. Um, so, Lulu, I would be careful also when you're having the sitting of um, uh, being careful with your information, um, what you give back. Uh, you do need to give feedback, but I would exactly. be. I call it careful. confirmation. A absolutely, absolutely. Um, so um, I would bear those things in, in mind, Lulu. But it, it, it's it's good if you're drawn to someone as well, because uh, you know if you ask spirit to help you as well, they'll guide you to someone. But if you're really not sure, I would have a short reading first. Um, mm -hmm. You know, don't go for. Uh, a one hour session and then be disappointed but if exactly. they're any good they won't charge if you're not connecting um we you know, well, you know at the sagb when we were there yeah. i still do it now and you know after 10 minutes you know that you're not getting the right things for that person and then i bring it to a hand and then i said sorry there's nothing i can do for you yeah um, I, but best sorry. many people say carry on um which i will do Mm. but uh, and then something usually happens but it's difficult um no readings the same mm. and uh we can't guarantee anything well that's the thing because you know as you mentioned before it, it is like um uh, a, uh, a telephone line you know and yeah. uh, if you've got a dodgy connection or a dodgy exchange exactly. there's not a lot you can do you know, mm. but uh, yeah, I, I mean, some just sort of um, soldier on, don't, don't they? The yeah. um, unreputable ones that go, "Well, you've had an hour of my time." Exactly. Um, you know, when uh, people come to yeah, when people come to me, um, and they ring up for a reading or mail me. I usually say to them, "Look, whoever you want to come through, just say to them, look, mum, dad, whoever it may be, I see you at Billy's at two o'clock on Saturday, so or whatever it may be." Well, it yeah. wouldn't be Saturday because I'm watching the football results. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them West any Ham. day but Saturday and then go along. Yeah, West yeah. Ham are doing yeah. <laughs> Oh, bless. Yeah, because that's important as well, isn't it, that um, people um, do send out that, those thoughts oh, for much, yeah. who they want. I mean, again, there's no guarantee with it, is there? But um, yeah. I find more often than not, if they do that, they turn up. Usually they do. Usually, mm. yeah, yeah, more often than not. Um, fantastic. So, um, hopefully, Lulu, that's um, answered that question. If you've got any any others, then um, do do um, get back to us. 
Uh, okay. I'll be now, a mate. I'll be in Maidstone in September at the MSDC Lulu. Come along. <laughs> Go for it. I can highly recommend it. It's always funny when um, when when Billy's uh, doing a demonstration and giving messages because, uh, again, I, I think the type of medium also attracts the, the type of connection from spirit, don't they? Exactly. You see, when we talk about laughter and fun with the spirit world, I mean, um, and people say, oh, you shouldn't have fun. Um, they really don't respect um, the gift that you have. Now, I know when to have fun with someone, um, because I, but I also understand I can't go to that young man or young woman that just lost a dear one to them and, and still have fun. So it's about right from the beginning, the knowledge, learning your trade, learning about the connection to the spirit world and the energy right from day one that you can work with it and understand it. Yeah, yeah, abs absolutely. Um, oh, oh, right. Th this is another one we have um, on occasions. Uh, there's uh, someone called Raven's Pride, and it's for either of us. And it says, um, has spirit ever given you information that you feel you cannot pass on? If, if so, what kind of information was it? I would never give anyone information that I feel will upset them. People come to me to be uplifted about their loved ones. So if they give me um, negative stuff, I don't usually get any negative stuff, mm. but I had a man come to me a few years ago and he'd been, ar been arrested. He was going to court um, because he was accused of being a paedophile and interfering with a young woman. And um, he was my client sitting there. So once I'm in that zone, I'm linking into that God energy and I love that person while they're sitting with me. Mm. So anyway, he said, I didn't do it. And his mother, who had come through, said, yes, he did. Mm. <laughs> so I couldn't say that to him because he thought his mother was supporting and help because he loved her dearly. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. my job was to help him. And I said to, more or less to him, I feel this will go to the wire. Just be strong. So give them some hope. I don't care who it is coming to me. While I'm in the zone, I will give that person hope. As long yeah. as I don't know anything about them first. I was in Germany, and um, I used to have a young girl that used to translate for me. Um, and this woman come for a reading. Um, it was in a place called Wolfsburg, where they make the VW cars. And she had a lovely read. And then I was made aware from her husband in the spirit world um, that their son had been abused um, as a young person mm. and um, that um, she knew who it was. So, I said, oh, you know who this man was that abused your son? So, oh, yes, it's my second husband. Oh. I thought, oh, my God. And the young girl that was translating, she said, how on earth could you work with that woman now? But while I was in that zone working with her, I could finish the reading off. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't give a reading to the next person, that man, because um, I'm sorry I knew about him. And yeah, but it's there. Because the first thing you learn also as a medium, not to judge. And yeah. I would not give anything negative. Um, I don't think so. Um Unless it's, oh, what, what do you mean by negative? Um, would it be about, it really is getting the connection to the spirit world. If they love their mom, their dad, and they're coming through giving information about them and about a situation that could do this or do that. And I'll say to them, would you take the advice that your mother would give you? She's saying, don't take this job, it'll lead to tears. Um, yeah. Then perhaps in that respect, but nothing about death, Nothing about, although with illness and sickness, um, you find this is where the experience comes in. You yeah. find the words. And I've had a few women say to me, oh, you know, you told me about um, someone with a lump and uh, to just give them a warning. Um, I knew it was them. And they come back and said it was me. And um, I went straight to the doctor's hospital and uh, I had the operation and I'm okay now. Yeah. 
So you can help in that way from from the negativity bring the positivity. Yeah, and I mean there are some things that we're by law not to do, and I think there's a good reason. You know, like um, so. as you talk about passings and, and different things. Um, but um, I, I, I'm like you; we're, we're not really supposed to give information um about illness or that kind of advice but to to be frank um like you um i have but i always qualify it um in two ways really um Obviously, I'm not a doctor, so I explain that. And even if the doc, if the doctor is the communicator, I say this person's not a doctor unless they can identify that they mm-hmm. weren't previously. Um, mm-hmm. But also that um, um, the way I work, I give information, confirmation, information, confirmation, so exactly. we know we're connected all the way along. Exactly. And then, yeah, and then I say, look, you know, you've got any doubts at all whatsoever? Go see a GP. You know. Yeah. That's because, what I say. Mm, because say. Um, some mediums don't. They go, oh, well, it's this, 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 and this, and then that's it. And they move on. And I've seen that done from, from um, the public platform, and they just leave them hanging. It's, exactly. Um, We're not there to give um, medication or diagnose. As they're, although on a lighter note, uh, <laughs> a woman come to me for a reading, and uh, she sat there, a glum face, and right at the end I said you don't seem very happy she said I've come to see if my car's going to be okay I said you need a mechanic <laughs> not a <medium." laughs> yeah, they both start with M but you know a little difference um, oh that, that's a, that's a great story um, Raven's Pride um, I'll give you an answer on your question uh, after the break we're just going to go into the break now and we'll be straight back after this You've been listening to Leo Bonomo, Leo Bonomo, the host of The Voice of Spirit, live every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. For more information on the show, guests, and host of The Voice of Spirit, or to book a private reading, please visit leo-bonomo.com. That's leo-bonomo.com. Your connection to the other side is just a phone call away. The Voice of Spirit. It is amazing, is it not? This is KCOR Las Vegas, home of the Digital Radio Network, broadcasting from a shack just south of Area 51. Wait, that doesn't exist. This is the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Now for the news. This is the world-famous KCOR. That's the only station I listen to. In the deep recesses of one's mind, there is a voice, a guiding light through the darkness, a connection to the other side. You're ready to wake up, you're going to wake up. And if you're not ready, you're going to stay pretending that you're just a little poor little me a pathway to spiritual that echoes with enlightenment the voice of spirit the voice of spirit you are a function of this total galaxy bounded by the milky way and that furthermore this galaxy is a function of all other galaxies your journey starts here and now with your host and connection to spirit Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. Hi, welcome back. You're listening to Leo Bonomo on the Voice of Spirit Radio Show, Core Radio. Um, if you want to make a donation to the show, then donate to Voice of Spirit. And if you want to advertise at all, then do get in contact with me uh, on my website, and that's www.leo-bonomo.com. So you can contact me there. You can contact me on Facebook. Um, you can also, uh, I'm sure Billy wouldn't mind if you um, contacted him on Facebook. And no, uh, that's fine. Yeah, fantastic. So um, we had uh, Raven's Pride having a question for, for um, Billy and myself. Um, has Spirit ever given you information that you feel that you cannot pass on? And if so, what kind was it? And um, 
Um, I've had several different types, but I was asked by a gentleman who was quite sensitive himself. Um, but there was there, there was uh, not. A, uh, I don't think we all any of us here get a full understanding. But he had um, uh, a slightly. Uh, strange understanding of spirit and he knew that he was ill nothing had been confirmed and he had got cancer and um, he asked me about that and um, uh, and uh, I, d I don't know how it is for you Billy but I see the organs inside the body and I usually if they're getting healing I usually see them um, in gold mm -hmm. and I, I could tell that you know he was in a pretty bad way mm -hmm. and um, basically what I said to the guy was that um, he, he didn't appear to be well and I know knew that it, it was, you know, hurting in lots of places, but he, he needed to, to go um, see a doctor and get things checked out. But mm. uh, I think he had a very good sense that he had five or six months left to live. Right. And that was certainly what I picked up. But because um, uh, you're never quite sure anyway, are you, how people will receive news? Because exactly. they've got a negative slant on it. You know, sometimes it's something that, mm. hey, that's okay. And they'll tell Leo you. Leo told me right. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You yeah. have to be so yeah. careful. So careful. You do, you do. And, you know, that's why um, when um, I get those situations, I'm very careful of what I'm going to say. But to be sure, I don't leave that person. The whole point is when someone comes to me, that they leave me feeling uplifted, knowing that their loved ones are okay. And the whole point, talking about everything that we do, is simply to give evidence of life after death that's all we need to do that's our job that's a medium many of us can work on a psychic level as well but for me it's the medium mystic quality and the evidence of spirit that i love very very much so and uh, i enjoy that that communication with the spirit world it's so wonderful and uh, over the years I've, I've been privileged to have that when I was only 16, I was in the Merchant Navy, and uh, there was two gay guys that was very spiritual, um, Lola, who went on to be uh, a drag queen on the um, East Enders, the first one that was on there, oh. and Laurie Lee. And uh, they taught me a lot. Um, they were so spiritual. And uh, we used to sit there on the high seas, the ship rocking backwards and forwards, and sitting in a seance. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing. But they are the ones that open up my mind a lot more. And it was sad because um, Laurie, after a fantastic life, and low, went, um, got cancer and uh, could hardly breathe. And uh, he was down in Dover. And I used to go and see him when I used to go down to Kent and Dover doing demonstrations. And I always remember his words. He said, I used to say to you when you was a kid that you've got a gift. He said, remember, don't ever misuse it. And I feel that's important. Don't ever misuse it. Um, uh, because we have the ability to change people's life for better or worse. Yeah. And, and that brings me nicely on to, um, to another point where um, some people, um, they just won't make a move without consulting a tarot reader a medium right. or a psych and, and that's very very sad as well isn't it uh i think oh, there must be a psychological sad. problem there that you know yeah yes yeah. i have people like that that come to me um uh, it's difficult um sometimes um when someone comes to me they've lost a dear one mm -hmm. um and they stay with me it's like having a little bird with a broken wing and when I've mended their wing, they fly away, and I never see them again. Um, and I like that. Um, but we're talking about the psychic ability, and um, they <laughs> just reminded me of a story. A girl used to come to me at the SAGB, not just me, um, Peter Walker. I don't know if you remember Peter Walker, um, mm, the memory yeah, man, so, yeah. and, and Keith oh, Walker. Yeah. Mm. And um, anyway... Um, she was always there, a loved one. She used to come through. And um, I gave her some lovely information. And I said, you just met a man called Pierre, a journalist. And he's French. Something about rugby. And he was a rugby journalist. 
and mm. uh, she, she said, I'm going to Paris to see him. I said, oh, wonderful. I said, just be careful. You don't get drunk and mess it up. So anyway, she come back about a week or so later, furious. Mm. And what had happened, she said, you was wrong. You was wrong. I said, what do you mean? She said, I went there and he threw me out. I said, why? Because he was talking to other women and she got drunk and abused him. So <laughs> she said, get someone from the spirit world. I said, I'm sorry, but there's no one here at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> They're all out so, to lunch. <laughs> yeah. So you have to be very, very careful um, with people that um, do have that problem of living their life through spirit. And unfortunately, it's usually on the psychic level, what to do, what not to do. Um, and, you know, it's difficult. I, I have people come in from business backgrounds that come for not so much for help but for confirmation mm. and uh, and hopefully we do help them but people that are coming to live their lives um, I find that a little sad um, but, but if that's what they want who am I to say no um, well yeah because you know we're all um we, we we choose our lives you know there's that old saying oh you know you can't pick your parents but we do and we choose the environment that we're going to live in you know uh, what we may see as human good or bad <clears throat> to teach us lessons and um uh, and, and some have chosen particular paths which are which are quite hard and you know um as a spirit um it's a wonderful thing uh i've been asked several times you know um on uh, um, reincarnation uh, and that kind of thing. And people say, well, look, you know, uh, who in their right mind as a human would want to be born into abject poverty, maybe Nigeria or a place where there's war and suffer all their lives, starvations and that. And from a human point of view, you'd think, oh, not me. Um, but from a spiritual point of view, th there's, a, there's a lot to gain, isn't there? If you believe in reincarnation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had a feeling, actually, that, that, you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, um, I don't believe it in the way it's portrayed. I've seen too many John the Baptist and Jesuses and Mary oh, Magdalene's, yeah. So. I know. Well, yeah. I mean, and no offense to, to our American cousins there, but um, I don't know if they're so popular and maybe um, Tina, the producer, can let us know. Um, but there used to be lots of reincarnation parties and that, you know, that was all the fad. And you get 50 Cleopatras turn up. I mean, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, that kind of thing. Um, I think I went to that party. <laughs> 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 Fourth one along on the left. I, I think I spotted you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. But um, I, I know when um, when I've developed and certainly uh, um, some of my students, you get to a point where a purge is needed and and things well, come back. So. Yeah, very and that so. that can be very emotional, can't it? As well. Very very. But you've also got to be truthful with them. Mm. You've also got to be truthful with them. You know. When, I mean, at my teacher that I had, Betty Reeves, all those years ago, um, after a year, she said, now we're going to start communicating with the spirit world. I said, but I've been doing that. She said, yes, uh, you're being given a message. It's not the spirit world. Because <laughs> it, it was all psychic mainly. But we don't want to hear that at first because we're on this little dream that we can help people change the world. We're a knight on a white horse going out and change the world. And, uh, and you brought back to reality. But by then, after a year or so, you gain that strength to be able to deal with it. So you also learn from the students and each one's an individual how to work with them. And there's so many different subjects to cover. Um, from learning about the aura, learning about the energy, how we link with the spirit world, different things, uh, uh, colour, how it works with us, flowers, nature itself, the animal kingdom. Um, it's um, wonderful, wonderful. Actually, talking about animals, um, Gordon's got a book out now, The Spiritual Nature of, of Animals, Gordon Smith, oh. and my little dog is in it um, because he was very oh, spiritual. Bless. Yeah, <laughs> 
I'll tell you what happened a short while ago. I was doing um, um, a psychic supper. And, uh, you know, animals can't come back, don't they? And oh, yeah, they absolutely. give evidence and that. Yeah. And um, uh, this is one that I remember because, again, I, I was quite stunned. And uh, this lady sat down and this this um, dog walked in, quite a big dog. It was honey coloured. And mm. uh, so I'm waiting for, you know, another communicator to come with the dog maybe or just turn up and um and they didn't so i started giving information about this dog and you know she could take everything and uh, uh the end sum of that was um the the dog did the whole reading well, never happened to me before yeah mind to um, mind the dog's got a mind you can link link to the mind a- absolutely and i think that does stun some people because they think oh, yeah. well an animal is an animal, and yes, they're intelligent, but they, they don't understand they can communicate um, oh, yeah. because it's all telepathic, isn't it, in spirit? Exactly. I go to Stockholm twice a year, and there's a lady there, and she loves her animals. And when I gave her her animals the first time, she was amazed. Absolutely. I, I love working with the animals. They're brilliant. And, of course, it's another part of what we learn to do. And... And the animal healers, the, the horse whisperer, I feel there's a spiritual connotation in all these. Um, I've got a friend, Roy, and he'd rather work with animals than people. Um, but um, it is important that we realise it's not just about communication with um, our families and loved ones. The animals are our families as well and bring us also so much love. And uh, I know many people miss their animals. Um, much more than their family sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I've had I've had that before. Um, I had um, uh, a reading um, for um, I think it was a lady, yeah, and um, her her father had come through, and so I was giving this kind of, whatever it was, and she said to me, um, uh because he he was in a very subtle way apologizing and she said to me uh do you mind if we can get somebody else so i said well yeah you know we just asked for somebody to come forward and um the result was um sh- she was still very upset by him um she'd listened to what was being said but didn't accept it and it turned out that from a very young age he'd been abusing her all right and, yeah. He'd obviously realised in spirit it was wrong, um, and, and come back to apologise. Come back to apologise. So he was ready to, and she quite wasn't. You know, right. Uh, that's that's one of the things about teaching, teaching the students, and when you come in a reading, because every read should be a, a teaching process as well, yeah. is uh, because people don't realise that. When they do something wrong to someone, oh, I'm not talking about silly, petty things, but when they do something wrong to someone, they want forgiveness when they pass to the spirit world. They have to wait until the other person has grown spiritually enough to forgive them. It could happen here, or they may have to wait until that person passes over themselves. So it's a very uh, difficult process. It is. And it, it's sometimes very, very hard to to um, get through to a sitter or, or, or if you're doing a workshop um, to people, that process. Um, mm. Because I, I think that the, the natural human mentality is, um, for example, if, if you get... Um, a criminal maybe a murderer or something like that and they plea bargain and so you know that they kind of i mean they're still paying for it but they kind of get out of it and and they the other people i know it's hard to forgive won't forgive them because they think they've got away with it and to explain to them that well they may have evaded a little bit of that here they're never going to get away with it over there you know because exactly. that realization yeah. kicks in doesn't it of what you've mm. done yeah very much so yeah it's it's difficult at times to to portray it's usually the if they come the first time um i don't tell them it's when they've grown a bit and begin to understand Mm. a bit more then you can impart that knowledge so it's all about knowledge leo isn't it all Mm. about knowledge and of course when i start my schools off um and students the first thing i 
I learn them to work for, on self. Um, mm. Learning to sit in the power, sit in the energy for months until they're ready to start giving messages. And the trouble today is they want everything instant, like instant tea, instant coffee. They want instant mediumship. And they have to learn to sit in the power so that they can allow the spirit world to subtly come in and blend with their own energy. And it takes time, like I said about my teacher earlier on, after a year. So it is important that you learn to sit in that power. And there used to be a wonderful medium. Um, oh, what's his name now? He passed over a couple of years ago. Um, oh, I can't think of his name. That used to teach this, what made some wonderful tapes. And um, he believed in this very much. And I oh, feel you, that, do you mean Leslie Flynn? No, he's a biggish man. Was at Stansted, the beard. Oh, Kim, oh. Tim. Oh, oh. that's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and he was. He come from Liverpool. Was going to be a monk at one time. Absolutely wonderful. He was. Yeah, Edwards. Edwards. Oh, um. Oh God! Yeah. You know, I was going to say. Um, that Jimmy Edwards, isn't it? No, um, no. it's uh, Harry Edwards. Ha no, no, he's no. a healer. This was Glyn Edwards. Oh, Glyn Edwards, yeah, that was yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> lovely, lovely man, lovely man. Yeah, so he was very good at explaining that sitting in the power of there. But when we spoke about um, people coming for psychic messages and such, I remember Gordon Hig Higginson once at Stan said, and uh, and he said, um, who are we to judge what people want when they come to us? Yeah. And uh, it's um, important that we realize that these people come to us. We are not there to say, you must do this or do that. They come with different reasons, um, different things have happened to their lives. And uh, there's no sh straight way of doing a thing for everyone. The one hat doesn't fit all. We, that is why it's important that we learn to sit we learn to sit in that power. We learn the spirit world to come closer and to communicate mind to mind, which is a wonderful thing to be able to do. Hard but difficult. And that's why when we were talking to Tina earlier on, people start doing the weird and wonderful things. Um, they want to start talking about weird things to do with spirit world. They're not interested. They fall at the first hurdle because they realize that it's hard. It's not easy. It's a difficult subject to pursue and to learn. And, uh, you know, it takes time. It takes time. But yeah. there's nothing more wonderful, you know, when you get that connection with a loved one to help them. Uh, I, keep, yeah. I keep seeing um, a man in uniform, by the way. Ah, okay. Yeah, that, that, think, that would make sense. I keep whether he was in the in the military, he was in the military and was in the either in the desert or a hot country or something like that, or even Middle East. Uh, I, I know who you mean. Um, my uncle's um, uh, well, half my family's Italian, um, so I think that would explain um, that um, they were in the in the one was in the military. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that I, I can I can understand uh, exactly right. yes, and it was a hot country, and mm -hmm. uh, whatever it may have been, and there's also a connection I would say to Australia. Mm. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So I know that would be there as well. So you've got a message, then you can pay me next time. Go for yeah. the expense. <laughs> Go for the expense. <laughs> I will do. Yeah, let's make it a couple of hours. Hey, eh? <laughs> is, is there no one else want a message or something? Um, hopefully, um, if you do want a message, um, please uh, come through um, through chat or if you want to give us a call. If you're in the States, it's 702-425-9230. Um, if you're outside the States, add a one to that. Um, or you can, you can Skype us. So, um, yeah, uh, do come through and, and do ask. Uh, take great advantage of um, Billy being here. And um, 
And uh, if you want to ask questions on uh, development, uh, whatever anything. it might be, yeah, mm -hmm. anything, we're absolutely here uh, to help you. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I deplore is, um, you, you know, the sad state of mediumship. And I think, unfortunately, it's also a sign of the times because, you know, people are famous for being famous now. And mm -hmm. mediumship, it, it in in that sense is a double-edged sword because there are so many shows quite a lot of negative um uh -huh. but it, so many shows that um have made it um accessible to people and it gets the juices flowing yeah. and then they think with 15 minutes of fame oh i've I, I gone a five-week course or a weekend course i'll be a medium it's um mm. it's not good is it There's i'm no sorry to laugh at them but is there yeah there's no yeah. longevity. They can't keep it going. And the yeah. saddest thing is people still, they refer to the old days. There were some lovely mediums around. Of course, there were some mm. brilliant ones. But there's some brilliant ones around today. Yeah. But unfortunately, they're under the radar. And you go anywhere around the country, some of these young mediums coming up now that are doing it for the right reasons. And uh, they're brilliant. But too often, it's the ones that push themselves um and go out there um want the glitter dust to fall on them that seem yeah. to get the the air time and such things as well which is a pity but we hear people complain all the time about standards but um i feel we don't give enough credence to some of those not just young ones those wonderful mediums that are coming through at this moment in time Absolutely. We're just going to go into a break, Billy. So um, yeah. if you're out there and you're listening, and, and hopefully you are, it's 702-425-9230 or chat line, etc. And we'll be back straight after this. This is the voice of spirit, your connection to the other side. To understand something spiritually, you must experience it. And in order to experience it, you have to experience it in your imagination. Explore with us by calling 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Uh, give us a call now. Worldwide Colors use Skype name KCOR Radio. Everything that now exists was once imagined. Therefore, everything that is going to exist must first be imagined. Back with your guide to spirit, Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. After these brief words from our sponsors. One million miles till midnight. A story of timelines, artificial worlds, simulated races and the galactic imprint and the destiny of a blue world called earth one million miles till midnight written by solaris blue raven is a journey through the mind's eye which allows the reader to surf a wave of technological and multi-dimensional intellect revealing a bridge between conscious design and the truth a multi-dimensional bleed-through awakens the world of artificial intelligence to set sail into the frontiers of a vast multiverse, morphing planets and terraforming ascended worlds beyond the linear programs of a fated race. One million miles till midnight will awaken, inspire, prepare and enlighten one to the many multi-dimensional states of consciousness and worlds we reside in. With every cell and atom, we are this truth and multiverse. One Million Miles Till Midnight. Written by Solaris Blue Raven. Available now at Amazon.com and GlennNT.com. Don't wait. Get your copy today. KCOR Las Vegas. All the time. Of course I listen. I listen all day. It's the best music. KCOR, the new underground source for news, talk, and music at KCORradio.com. Tell your friends. Email them or Facebook them or Twitter them. Hey, are we done here? Because I'm losing my buzz. 
If ever a breed was affectionate to a fault, it's the Golden Retriever. They're people dogs, pure and simple. And the Golden Retriever Rescue of Southern Nevada needs your help. If you would like to volunteer, foster, adopt, or donate, go to the Golden Retriever Rescue of Southern Nevada's website at grrsn.org. That's grrsn.org. Or call 598-GOLD. That's 598-G-O-L-D. Friday night, 9 p.m. Pacific. Jump onto the celestial highway and travel at the speed of light into hyperspace. 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 Hosted by Solaris Blue Raven. She navigates you through the cosmic tides of mysticism into the world of covert technology, UFOs, mystical sciences, and the world of unforeseen forces. You get to really sort of enjoy a bizarre ride. Listen live, Friday night, 9 p.m. Pacific. For hyperspace. The one show that blows the whistle off our government black ops projects. Hyperspace. Hosted by Solaris Blue Raven. Solaris Blue Raven. Exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Wanna take a ride? Take a ride. Take a ride. Welcome back to the Voice of Spirit. Your connection to the other side. There's no accidents in this universe. We all show up here with a purpose. There's an intelligence that is a part of everything and everyone, and all of us are connected to it. Connect with us on Twitter by using hashtag KCOR. Even better, join us live in our chat room at kcorradio.com. To get a free reading during the show, call 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Give us a call now. Worldwide callers, use Skype name KCOR Radio. And now, inspirational clairvoyant medium, psychic, and your connection to the spirit, the host of the Voice of Spirit, Leo Bonomo. Hi, welcome back. Um, we've got Lulu back, and uh, Lulu would love a message. Uh, Billy, would you would you like to give uh, Lulu a message? Well, the first thing I thought as soon as I was here, um, seeing that message from I thought she may have a bit of spiritual knowledge herself. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me that she senses and feels things as, as well. But I know just feeling the energy um, with the name and around her, um, I feel that um, there is a lady in the spirit world that I feel would be a grandmother that would come close to her that was quite close to her, I want to say, but I also felt, although she said she was from Kent, I feel there's a London connection there as well. And anything you want to add to that? Um, yeah, let me just, because uh, I've got, um, right, um, Lulu, uh, I'm seeing a lady from the shoulders up, um, dark hair, it's more or less jaw length, slightly longer. Um, when I see them from, from the shoulders up, I know that they're alive and I quite often pick up very accurately on who's on, uh, usually on the end of the line or the end of the chat line. Um, so, um, I feel, I do feel strongly it's you. If it's not, it's someone that you would know. And, um, uh, I'm not sure who's giving me this information at the moment, but would you understand having a large struggle going back a couple of months? There is something that you're you're desperately ty- trying to sort out, and it, it's not working. This isn't a financial matter. Um, whoever's here has just written the word emotional for me, so I know there's a big struggle there. Um, I know that you've stepped back as well. And you've tried to deal with it by putting a little bit of distance between you and this person. Um, but what this person in spirit, they'll step forward hopefully in a moment. What this person in spirit is saying, give yourself time. Try and take the emotion out of it and deal with it. I do feel it's a relationship issue. And this is a gentleman now I can hear the voice. And he's saying, you can get through it. Um, there's a lot of judgments that have been made. Um, on both sides, and neither of you have seen the thing clearly. So it's something that that step back, take the emotion out of it, 
you can deal with it. I'm actually being taken forward. Let's say again. I'm being taken forward a couple of months, and I do feel that this will get sorted out for you. So hopefully that makes sense. Do give us some feedback. And um, is there a new uh, baby? A new child. Oh. Wherever there's been a new baby or recently or something, there's about a new child there for some reason. So I know that should link in that with that. And when I spoke to you about the military connection, there's something to do with the Navy that goes back in that family as well. So I know that would be around. The name of William Bill, that should link in there with us as well. And I know a man who had lung and chest problems before passing over to the spirit world. Don't feel too tall, but I feel an easy smile comes to his face. And I know some of his trinkets and things. And I'm seeing the packet of old Royal Navy, you know, with the Navy man on the cigarettes. So I know he was oh. a heavy smoker. Oh, that'd be players, wouldn't it? I yes. Can, I can actually taste it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't smoke, by the way, but I've so, <laughs> And I feel it would have liked to, as they would say in Scotland, because it's Burns Day today, a wee dram. She oh, said, oh, baby, yeah. yes. Yeah. So Burns I feel day. that's to do with that. So I do feel. Is this Lulu Cooper? Lulu, is it Lulu Cooper? Would the surname mean something to you? Oh, we'll find out in a minute. Anyway, yeah. I noticed something about the um, uh, about the, the new babies, I thought. And I feel there's new things um, happening around that child and that relationship. And I feel that when you said about things going forward, I think it feels will resolve itself. And I know that... Bill is my granddad, wonderful. So it's lovely. So it's there for you. He's there for you, trying to help you, my child. My child. I feel like the Pope. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I know it as I'm talking there, wherever there is Eastern, what did I say? Uh, Cooper. Cooper, yeah. yeah. Does the name Cooper mean anything to you, my darling? But anyway, I know it as I'm talking to you, I do feel there is some connection either with Scotland or Ireland that should link in there with us as well. So new opportunities for you, I want to say. I like the feel of you. Right, it's wonderful. <laughs> so I know that I just, because Burns Day, we've got to have a Scottish person coming through, haven't we, <laughs> Lulu? Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, I know, as I said, he would have liked to wee dram. And I know that he would have loved on nights like this, the Jimmy Shan type of records and that type of music around him. So lots of warmth and love coming from it. I feel I want to give you a big hug. So I don't feel he would do that normally, but I know that you had a special place in his heart. Wherever you knew him well, because I'm seeing him with a photo of you as a child, and I feel that you are in his arms as a baby. So I know that photograph should be around. Shows me the daffodils, so I know there's an anniversary around the March time. And I know that as I look at the daffodils, the Cali yellow, which tells me that perhaps um, there's a knowledge or a new learning there with you as well. So I like the feel of that for you. Take lots of loves from him. Know that he's with you. And God bless. Thank you. Brilliant. So uh, hopefully, Lulu, uh, well, obviously a lot of it's made sense. Um, she has... Um, um, uh, confirmed as well that her granddad is scottish and that bill was the was the name and the new baby uh just in case i hadn't re um repeated that so um fantastic lulu um if anyone else uh, wants a message then please do call us again it's 702-4259-230 and uh, you can call directly or as tina has done join the chat room and ask questions there um fantastic um We'd, oh, we're just getting a little quick reply here. I'll just wait a second or two for that. Because it's nice to get the instant feedback, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's that's the um, the nice thing when you... Oh, spot yeah. on. Spot oh, on. That's lovely. Fantastic. Lovely. That's brilliant. Fantastic. Okay. So if you're around Maidstone in, in, <laughs> in Kent in September, I'll be there at the Maidstone Spiritual Development Centre. Fantastic. doing a, a demonstration and some readings so msdc get them online msdc okay fantastic um 
I, I never think about retiring, uh, and luckily this is a job <laughs> that we can do until we drop. Um, so, um, um, oh, we've got a message from Christy. I'll just finish what I'm saying, and then we'll, we'll look at the message for Christy. Um, so I, I never think about retiring. It, it's one of those privileges that this is a job we can do until we go home. Um, do, do you ever think of retiring, Billy? All the time, but never. Um, <laughs> People, people, people keep telling me um, I'm 73 now, and oh, uh, you don't look it. <laughs> oh, thank you. You look good yourself, Leo. And uh, I'm only uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Those land cells, um, but it's um, it, no. I think. But what else would I do? Do the knitting, and you know, it makes me happy. It makes me joyful. Um, it makes me contented, and. Yeah. Uh, now I find the travelling abroad um, sometimes a little bit difficult, but once I'm there, I'm okay. I only go to places that I like now, and uh, I usually have a ball. Um, sometimes uh, there's a little bit of health issues, but soon get over that. As we know, we're all going to go one day. Um, but I would like to be like Mary Duffy. She was doing a seminar at Stansted College. She jumped in the taxi to go home and died. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. What a way to yeah. go. So, a absolutely. So no, retire? No. I don't even want to hear the word retirement. Yeah, I, I um, it's not really in my vocabulary. And, um, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm 61. Like you, I, I don't feel my age. I, I think when you when you work well, um, spirit ha have um, um, a need sometimes to keep people going um, for their own reasons and that. But, well, um I think this work really does keep you young. You know, if you approach it the right way, uh, I do feel it does. Oh, very much. Okay, we've got uh, Christine, and she's uh, looking for a message about either a job change or social life. I'll leave that to you. Okay, right. Now, let me see. Are you in England, Christine? We'll get a reply to that. Um, in a moment, right? The <clears throat> is I don't know if it's financial services or something like that, but I know that I'm seeing Massachusetts. All right, big city. Do you ever work in financial services in any way, or in office work? Right, that makes sense to me then, because I feel that our change is coming to do with work. I don't feel it's so much the work that you're doing, but the people you're working with or for in some way. Yeah. And uh, I feel that our change is coming. Social life, I feel that um, I want to say, um, you know what you have to do. And I would say, you've got a lot going for you, if only you realised it. And I would say, you're a good-looking gal, uh, but I don't think that you use your your own faculties enough. I also know there's a, a spiritual sensitivity around you. And also, I know that you must be superstitious in what, some way, because I'm looking at a rabbit's paw uh, for some reason. <laughs> but I do feel um, I'm looking at changes going over the next couple of months. I'm seeing August, which I know there should be an anniversary around that time. And as I'm talking to you here, I'm aware of a gentleman. And once again, it's the military. Whether you knew someone that either served in Vietnam or died in Vietnam, I'm not sure what it is. But it's army. It's to do with the army in some way. Leo. Okay. Um, I agree with Billy. Um, um, the... the as I'm, I'm seeing a medium-sized building, so I would say that you work in a medium-sized um, accountancy firm, and I'm seeing different levels. So I know there are two levels above you. Um, so this would be um, certainly managerial and perhaps the owners of the company. If, if not, it's definitely supervisory and managerial. Um, would you understand, Christine, that, that there is a shift that's coming there? Um, there are changes happening there, and somebody seems to be wielding the big stick. So they're wanting to make... Um, a lot of changes I know because I can see a hand over the top of your head that you 
have been held back as well. So this this build up has been second and um, the resentment that's been built up within that company has been happening for quite some time um i do feel that what you need to do um is think about looking for a job i know that you're very experienced in what you do and although um uh, jobs are hard to come by in the states uh, i do know that there is there is uh, work for you. Somebody has just mentioned um, the word headhunted. So would you understand being in a position where you could be headhunted? Because I don't know what type of accounting you do, but I'm not getting the normal type. So I, I feel there's a break there for that. Um, look around because I do think somebody will snap you up. And it, it's it, it's time for you to make that change. Whatever's happened in that firm, there's a lot of disruption there. Um, social life. Um, Look, it's making uh, moves. Uh, headhunter. Okay, I uh, uh, bless you for that. Yeah, because um, I know there's something slightly different about what you do in accounts. And so there's a shift there. Um, that will happen for you. Um, I know we can all say um, we're um, underpaid and, and overworked, um, but I do know there will be a shift in money for you there. Uh, as well, um, if we switch over to social life, um, I know that you work very hard. And there's a, there's a gentleman here. There we go. I've got a gentleman here. He's got um, dark hair. There's a parting on the right, quite high. The hair has receded a little bit. I can see him wearing a suit. He's around five foot seven, five foot eight. Does carry a bit of weight. And um, th this gentleman says that whilst there is a need for you to be more social, that you are restricted either by the work and the hours that you do, or you 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 feel it's too big a step. Um, he wants you to take your courage in both hands and just begin to go out. This does relate to, he's been very um, diplomatic here. He says the, the, the holding back on the social scene relates to um, what he says is a slightly disturbing um, incident that happened. So I know that your confidence in that direction has been knocked. Um, this is some time back. We're going back uh, second we're going back four to five years for that and um he, he says there's an incident there that kind of rocked your boat a little bit but you need to put that effort in because whilst you want to be more social you're not allowed to firstly because of working hours but also because your confidence has been knocked so hopefully get back to us and let us know um um ha how that is uh, um christine but hopefully um that would all make sense to you and, you know, the funny thing is, as you're talking, I'm hearing an old-fashioned song, I Take You Home Again, Kathleen. I don't know if that name means anything. Irish. Or, or an Irish connection, yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let us know on that as well, uh, uh, Christine, uh, an Irish connection or that song you might have. But there will be a move. There will yeah. be a move. She's looking forward to it. And I know that there may be a hiccup, but she will get there. I felt by August it will be settled and done. Yeah, I'm getting ticks for that as well. So um, there we are. Brilliant. Great. Well done. So Grandmother she, was Irish. And she's there for you. Oh. So wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So and I know there's um, a small Bible that belongs to her that should still be around. Mm. Yeah. This is. Uh, I think this is a very old Bible because I'm seeing one. It's got a faded green cover. I don't, I don't think it's leather, but there, there, it is written in gold. It's, it's quite faded, this. So uh, I, I know that that was quite dear to someone, probably her grandmother. Right. But, um, right. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, um, let us know about the rest of it, Christine. And uh, thank you so much. Um, oh, uh, Tina's writing again. Tina's a producer, um, everybody. So um, she's passing the messages on for us uh, that was wonderful handy, wonderful yeah, yeah. fantastic so, so she's just confirmed about the bible and uh, being handed down um so. from grandmother to mother wonderful so. um i can't believe two hours is nearly gone is it really <laughs> yeah it's, it's wonderful when you're having a good time isn't it <laughs> yeah 
yeah, yeah it was okay. nice but I, I enjoyed it it was it was nice talking to people and mm. uh, always nice talking to you um but hopefully we've got across to people um the uh, of the joy of spirit and mm. it's not all doom and gloom and it's not weird it's not wacky it's not strange we're only doing what man's done since the beginning of time communicating with loved ones that are past the spirit I'd love to do what Linda Blair did in The Exorcist, but <laughs> it's, uh, I can't do it. You know, if it would have been wonderful, but it's important that everything we've done is done with the God energy, which is love. Every time you tune in, you tune your mind in to Radio Spirit. You link into that God energy that allows you to be full of love when you work with Spirit and work with the public. It's so so important. Uh, it is, and it, it's it's also very rewarding, isn't it? And I don't well, mean yeah. that in a selfish way, but it, it's it's so nice to be able to help people and to, to bring um, that comfort because religion causes a lot of fear, doesn't it, Billy? You know, exactly. hell and damnation and that, and it's yeah. not like that at all. And it's, this, what we do, is open to everyone. I mean, I come from a, a rough background from the east end of London and Essex, Tilbury, on the docks, going away in the Merchant Navy, um, leading a life of sex, drugs and rock and roll. And uh, when I found out about the spiritual pathway, it was absolutely wonderful. And it was nice. And I used to use the term before I'd walk through the park to get to the other side because it was quicker. Now I take it because I can look at what's in the park at the flowers and the beauty of what's here on, on this world, on this land. So it's important that remember, it's open for everyone. It's not for the special chosen few. Everyone has that ability to open themselves up to that power of spirit that allows them to also become an ambassador for the world of spirit. Absolutely. Um, and, and you're quite right. You know, um, years ago, everyone um, had, had that ability, you know, mm. and it was very natural, wasn't it? And uh, yeah. we, we kind of lost it along the way. Uh, to me, it's still very natural. Don't you? Mm. For me, it's natural. And when I see people struggling with it and uh, try to make it too academic, mm. it's the most simple thing to have that connection with spirit. And uh, I find that people being too academic loses the essence of what it is all about. It's not yeah. about being clever. It's the most oh. simple thing. And when you look around at history, the Fox sisters, young girls, Fatima, yeah. young people, um, Joan of Arc, a young woman, it was always young people. And I always tell my students, look at it through the eyes of a child. See the simplicity of it. And that's what enables you to get that quality of leadership when you see the simplicity of it. And don't try to make it, um, as we say, all glitter dust and balloons going off. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, t too many people make it complicated, don't they? Oh, that's very much so. And, and I think some of that's protectionism and ego. You oh, know, very much. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah, uh, that, that's, that's, you, you know, um, uh, I was once um, asked the question, you, you know, if I could have a wish, um, what would it be? And in an ideal world, um, we wouldn't need mediums. We wouldn't need us as intermediaries because everybody would have that connection. And I know it exactly. puts out of work, but, you know, to me, that's an ideal. If we've got that connection, I think the world would change a lot. Well, that's part of what we're trying to do mm. is to get people to express their own soul, their own spirit, that they will go on and hopefully be able to communicate to the spirit world. When I first died, my young sister died um, and I wanted to find out, is there life after death, really? And because uh, she, she was mediumistic and uh, she was only 40. And anyway, I, with Marlene, um, she showed me the way. And then I realized I could talk to my loved ones um, even better. So I thought, if I can talk to my own, I can talk to other people's. So, yeah. and that's the whole point. You can talk to your own loved ones and developing it properly, gaining that confidence gives you the confidence and the courage to realize that it's not your mind. You are talking to someone beyond the veil.
Yeah, because that, that's a question that um, students often ask, isn't it? Am I making this up? Yeah. And uh, my, my usual answer to that is, if what you get surprises you, it cannot be your own mind. It has to be um, a, a discarnate mind. Billy, um, we've got to go now. It's been absolutely yeah. wonderful as usual. Always, to always a pleasure, Leo. Thank you so much. And, um, and love to everyone around the world, all those listening, and to the lovely Tina for being here for us. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Love and light to everyone. And hopefully we'll have you back. So um, we're closed now. And uh, thank you so much, Billy. It's been a pleasure. You've been listening to Leo Bonomo. Leo Bonomo. The host of The Voice of Spirit. Live every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. For more information on the show, guests, and host of The Voice of Spirit, or to book a private reading, please visit leo-bonomo.com. That's leo-bonomo.com. Your connection to the other side is just a phone call away. The Voice of Spirit. It is amazing, is it not? This is KCOR Las Vegas, home of the Digital Radio Network, broadcasting from a shack just south of Area 51. Wait, that doesn't exist. This is the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Now for the news.